Sorry, I've been... Sense of presence and location of poisons. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to move you guys off of the map, but for the sake of brevity, we'll say that you are camping just outside of the cathedral. Uh, poisons, poisonous creatures, and diseases. I'm looking for plants. Or okay. toads. Ooh, what if I got a disease? No, I don't want to deal with that. Dude, that video that I just sent at 50 seconds. <laughs> There's a guy that just gets fucking destroyed in the face of the water balloon. It makes me think of that time with Darren and Greg Stoner, like, throwing water balloons at my house. And Greg goes to drive off, and Darren, mm. who's never done anything athletic in his life, yeah. somehow squeezes a water balloon through this the like window. tiny gap in Greg Stoner's window, like he, it was like NFL quarterback level precision throw, and it just like hits him right in the fucking face. That's awesome. Yep, <laughs> that was that was quite Where possibly the, that's quite possibly the only Darren story where you didn't have to be there. Yeah, it, it was literally perfect. Like a, a centimeter either way, and it would have just like hit off the window. But like it, the balloon went directly through the tiny gap in the window. It was perfect. Okay, Dave, roll three D one hundreds. You're looking for plants that can be used to. Uh, for poisons, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 46, 16, and 9. Okay. Give me a second. I was looking at 64, not 46. Okay, here's what you find. Sorry, I'm just writing these down so I don't forget. All right, the first thing you find is Mandrake. I'll link the other one here. Oh my god, I'm a fucking idiot. Why? What's the matter? I was just looking up spiritual weapon and I just found I can upcast it to increase its damage. You wait until you read up about fucking spirit guardians. You find Belladonna. And then with the 46 wolves herb. Because spirit weapon will last until I long rest, right? I think so. So it's literally just one spell slot that I can use and upcast it to do 
gallon dam level damage. Spirit Guardians will do Radiant or um, um, oh, what the fuck? Radiant or uh, like Necromancy type damage in AoE. Let's see. Last for the duration. One minute. When you cast this, okay, wait. You create a floating spectral weapon within range that lasts for the duration or until you cast this spell again. So technically it lasts for one minute. But it's a bonus action. So, but yeah, you can cast it. It'll still take a spell slot, but yeah, you can upcast it and then it'll increase the damage. Oh, shit. I mean, it only lasts through combat, but... I mean, one minute in crazy. combat is typically... One minute in combat is... Well, it, it, you know. it lasts up to 10 minutes, and it's a concentration spell. Okay. Um, so that's why I say combat, because how often do we go through... What would that be, 60 rounds to kill something? Yeah. So that's why I say, like, it basically it would die off by the end of the... The comp once the combat ended. You've given us one hell of a fuck if we're in the 60 rounds. Especially with the damage Dave does. Well, all, you know, all I gotta do is incapacitate him and then we'll see. I hear he has nightmares of a gray orc. <laughs> I heard he was... A gray orc with true sight. Can he, can he, can he, uh, you sure he could run that far? Yes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's so long ago nobody remembers. <laughs> okay, uh, so are you good with the, uh, Mandrake, Belladonna, and uh, Wolves Herb. Yeah. Is there anything else you guys wanted to do on your long rest? Uh, yeah, like, I want to go ahead and swap wanna, out some wanna... spells. Okay. You may do so. Anybody want to attune to anything? I think yeah. I have this pretty cool hammer I want to try out. Hammer magic helmet. Yeah, and I also want to see if, um... Savik was to help me figure out this uh, plate chess piece I have as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll do that. Um, give me one second. Because we, we know that or does or I know what it does. Would, like, I'm not sure how to do this from a character perspective, DM. You're just trying to discern the code word uh, for me being able to phase into the material plane for 10 seconds. Or phase out of the material plane, sorry. All right, give me a second. I'm taking notes. Unless good old Gallon Dan wants that. I feel like that that's ultimate sneak attack damage attacking from another plane. What, what, what is? I honestly, I have to look it up. I forget the name of the, the piece of armor, but I know that um, what it does. Of etherealness. It, basically, for ten seconds, I can leave our plane, and nobody can hit or touch me while I'm in the oh, like, yeah. mirror plane or whatever it's called that we go that I go. That would to. be great for sneaking. So. You don't even know if you use that, you could sneak right up behind the dragon or something. They wouldn't even see you coming. Yeah, not even a dragon can get through that shit. 
Yeah, especially a black guy with a lot of treasures that lives up north. You know who could have really used this piece of armor? So oh, here we it's go. Bill Bell. <laughs> would have made would have made uh, the Hobbit story real short. Who's that guy? Fuck. Who's that guy from the book that they didn't put in the movie? Like overpowered. I don't know. I heard they made up a whole a whole movie that didn't even exist in the book. Oh, are we talking are we talking about the fucking Hobbit part three? Yeah. God damn it. I know. Now he's all triggered. My fucking rage is unending. Look at how they massacred my boy. At least look at he, how they made my uh, At least you didn't bring up and Amazon. And on top of that. <laughs> I was gonna say that's even worse. I'm gonna start it, drinking. They should have they should have stopped after the first three movies, just let it let it be. Could Honestly, up- like if they would have like if they would have done the Hobbit book and maybe one I would have maybe I one been- would slim it down too much, but if they did like maybe it, like a uh like I a was, two part. I, I was happy with the unexpected. The first movie I think is fine. Um because it plays into a lot of like the other world building aspects of Middle Earth. And it ends at a decent point. Like they are rescued by the Eagles. And besides, spoiler alert, sorry, it came out a fucking long ass time ago. Uh, they get saved by the Eagles. And they the turn, and they can... Yeah, looks good. Then you know, they look over and can see Erebor, the lonely fucking mountain, and the movie ends. That's fine. The next movie. Dude, it should have just been two movies. I can't. First of all, getting getting saved by the Eagles completely, oh, don't you, come on, bro. completely destroys the story of Lord of the Rings, though, because that just shows that Gandalf could have done that from the beginning, but he was way too much of an asshole. Hey, to, to just like, all right, Frodo, why don't you just ride on the back of this eagle and drop this into a volcano, which, by the way, it's a volcano, so it has an open what? opening at the top. So the eagle could have just flown over the mountain. I'm not listening the to the ring. I'm not listening to this. Literally 30 minute story. Oh, no. We're done. Stop it. Stop. I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you to the fucking tar pits for your ignorance. I'm just saying, like I'm just saying, like Gandalf is kind of a dick. <laughs> he has the guy who played Gandalf while they're sitting there. In the elf capital, with everyone there, Gandalf could have been like, hey, we all know this is a giant threat. Why don't I just call some eagles and we just fly over a mountain and drop a ring? Like, why? why like, he's supposed to be this, like, all-knowing great uh, wizard. A, like, you telling me he didn't think of that? Bro, listen to me. Let's, let's, uh, let's, I, I can't, I cannot. Oh, oh by the I way. I cannot. I can't talk about this. Oh, by the way, I the, only, to... the only other aerial threat is the Nazgul, which the eagles fuck up anyway. <laughs> like, there's literally a scene of the eagles just destroying that, uh, the, what, what's it called, the, what they ride on the back of? A fell beast. Is it just a fell beast? Is that just what it's called? I think so. But yeah, like, there's literally a scene <laughs> of, of an eagle just, like, destroying that shit. Listen. The eagle, like, cuts its head off with his talons. Listen to me. Do you want to play D&D? No, yeah, I guess we should play D&D and not get into Lord of the Rings it lore be. because we're going to be here all fucking night. I'm trying so hard to not engage in this conversation. <clears throat> I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Magic the Gathering. It's going to be Aragorn. real funny when all of the bad guys are attacking me tonight. So Dude, what do you um, want to do with this? Ar- oh, go ahead. Oh yeah, um, Magic the Gathering Aragorn trading card. Uh, actually, uh, during the rest, I'll go ahead and do an Arcana check, and I'll use Inspiration to give myself advantage on the Arcana check to reveal anything about Gradius's right. uh, set of armor. Oh, well, I was gonna say, can I assist him or anything? Yes, yeah, like... you can assist. Now we'll give him advantage. Okay, because, like, you know, being a, a dwarf, I feel like, though I'm not an armorer, 
like I feel like I would at least have some knowledge on plate sure. armor. So here's what you can discern. Um, Savik, you uh, is that your roll with advantage is 12? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Apparently. Yikes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you look at it and it's a normal piece of it's armor. Definitely in, it's definitely armor. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Gradius, you are assisting. So the first thing that you notice is, well, first of all, the armor is in need of repair. Um, due to the fact it needs mended, due to the fact that it was pulled off of a corpse in the graveyard, um, <clears throat> there are dwarven runes inscribed on uh, parts of the armor that you are able to notice, Gradius. Would I be able to read that to Savik to maybe help him understand more about what it's saying? Yeah, because like I might not understand what those magic runes mean, but I should be able to at least well, discern yeah, the words. They're in the dwarf script, so you would be able to at least uh, comprehend that enough to read it. Uh, uh, okay, so yeah. let's see here. Hold on. Can oh, I go I'm sorry. Ahead? Can go I ahead. go ahead then? Uh, cast uh, comprehend languages as a ritual. Yeah. Well, I mean, you shouldn't have to do that since I already know dwarven anyway, and I can just translate all right um then yeah uh go for it i was gonna ask if i could do a history check then on this yeah yeah you can do that well hopefully it's better than my arcana check <laughs> not by much <laughs> all right a 13 this piece of armor has clearly been worn by somebody. Yeah, or it has some history to it. Yeah. This armor was once donned in a battle. Uh, okay, so other than the fact that you know that this, this armor is magical in nature and is inscribed with dwarven runes, um, you are able to find a smith's mark um, <coughs> in... Inside um, uh, the the uh, the back of the the breath, so um, there's uh, <clears throat> the smith mark is like um, it's like the the blacksmith signature on a piece. Yeah, it's like their imp their their imprint that they put on when they make it. Um, would I be able, to, would it be history or investigation to like try and remember if I recognize the symbol? Uh, I, yeah, why don't you roll a history check? Religion? Um, history. no, no, I have to say, I mean, you know what, you know what, that's, it's interesting Armor, to say armor, that. Though. Armoring is a religion for dwarves. Yeah, that's I'm what I was saying. Okay. It's interesting you would say that because anything that regards... Oh, yeah, like, 22. I know who that fucker is. Okay, so you stare upon the Smith's mark. Um, and let's see, I have my note. It was made by... Um, it's an intricate emblem featuring a stylized anvil with a blazing, a blazing forge at its base. Above the anvil, a mountain peak with a radiant sun rising behind it is depicted. Um, <clears throat> this is the... Work of <clears throat> Mr. Sports's metal class. <laughs> yeah. uh, the kids at Protech made this. This is work of the uh, great dwarven master smith. Don't oh. worry, guys. We're not going to make Mr. Swartz look bad while he. Mr. Levy is walking through the classroom. We're just going to play Crazy Frog on the projector. <laughs> you know what else we did? Well, I should say we. I should say Dave. Making Ooh. that, making that like 9,000 page. The 9,000 hey, page. I knew it. I'm uh, going to end up in the office if you put a name on whatever it was. Are you talking about the uh, strobe light with the PowerPoint? Yeah. 
But yeah, he made that like 9,000 page PowerPoint that was just black and white. Over and over again, just a white page and a black page. Yeah. Then like, bro, what's that? It's like half a second he looks at like, no. What are you, Mr. Mayor, what are you doing? Giving all the other kids epilepsy? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy that that program was stopped like right after our class your dude your class our class was awful well i meant like like the class that dave west and i were in for uh what cisco. was it cisco yeah they like like yeah. immediately after our class they're like yeah we're not offering this anymore yeah, because either they realized just how difficult of a class it was, and then it, I guess, Swartz revamped it to the, networking The 10th basics. graders were not going to comprehend that shit. Yeah. Um, and so Swartz ended up redoing it and calling it Networking Basics, where it was just like the entry-level networking stuff as opposed to the actual, you know, like full like weeds. figuring out your subnet yeah. mask and like I, I get that shit now as an adult as a 10th grader absolutely not <laughs> what do you mean you can manually set IP addresses you just plug it into the router and the router gives you an IP address dude I was gonna take that class and then I dropped it because I got like so I, I don't know I got you like you missed out on here. so much fuckery yeah I heard I heard about that but I was scared I was like feeling so dumb when the class started and i, I it, was, it like, was a I pass, it was a pass fail wasn't it like it wasn't like an actual yeah. graded class it yeah, was he, like either he, you passed or you failed he tried to explain that to me too and i was like i don't know mr swartz i'm fucking yeah it was like wood shop was pass fail like if yeah. you built, if yeah. you built something then hey, you don't, mangle, don't mangle yourself mr bailey said you did a real good job yeah, you didn't kill yourself with any of this power equipment. You passed. If you have all extremities intact, you pass. Even if, uh, what was his name? Lee something. He was a grade above me. This kid, like, took a hammer. What are you talking about, yeah. It, it, fucking crazy. He's, he ended up going to the Marines. Like, that's the kind of person you want in the Marines, though, because they're, like, that shit crazy. But, like, he used to take, like, an, a copper wire and just stick it in the outlet and shock the shit out of himself just to see how much it hurt. And then he, there was one day in the paint room, he had to buy all of us new clothes. Because there was one day in the paint room, he had a pink spray paint can and just hit it with a hammer to see what it would do. Which then proceeded to shower everyone in the paint room in pink. Okay, so here is the information on your armor. Yeah, we're getting really sad track tonight. It's all right. Like, worse than normal, though. Uh, this armor was forged by Dwarven Master Smith Thrain Stoneforge, rumored to be one of the last Dwarven Master Smiths to work with the Great Forge of Kundrakar within the Stone Tooth Mountain. The Dwarven <clears throat> runes on the armor read as follows. Uh, is that the same uh, forge from... Yes. Um, that's where we went against to the giants. Yeah, that's where we went to recover okay. the heart of the That's forge. why it sounds, sounds familiar. Because my first question before you started saying that was going to be like, is he still alive? But obviously he's not. They live a long time, but I mean, like based long. on the condition of that forge and uh, how many sarcairuses are laying on the floor in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, the runes read as follows: uh, Undrakar, forge in the heart of the mountains, with a word, the veil shall part. And soul on scene shall pass where none have been. So, yeah. So I'm not any closer to figuring out what the word is. But I have a feeling once we get to my, my dad's crib. <laughs> he he my dad's house. He's going to have somebody that can fix it up. That's a, that's a pretty good theory. Yo, guys, my dad can fix it for us. 
Oh well, yeah, uh, for the rest of the long rest, assuming we're not in combat or anything, I'm gonna uh, attune to the plus two fire mace. Okay. Roger, Roger. The brazer mace. And I am gonna go pee real quick and grab a drink. Sounds good. Well, Clyde, I just wanted to congratulate you. On what? You pulled a full... Oh, oh man. I... I'm sorry, buddy. I, I completely blanked out. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, that's you have life. everything to be proud of. Please, uh, please, next time, just shoot me a message or something, because pretty much all my free time has gone into packing all my shit. Dude, it's all good. No, I didn't even find job until... here. I didn't even get back from Dulles until uh, like 10, 15 on Sunday night. Damn. You had to go the whole way to Dulles Airport? Yep. I had to go pick up my boss. Did you get paid? Uh, Yes. Good. I also got, yeah, so getting paid and also got some sweet handcrafted Italian goodies. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was pretty It was pretty cool. Also got to drive a beep beep on my Jeep for three hours. Cool. I was just, uh, dude, I just looked at a Jeep today that drove by when I was walking and thought, man, it'd be cool to have one of those, but I bet the, I bet the, the gas. Oh, and dude, they, yeah, guys the gas, gas, the gas good, is they? awful, like, dude. I, yeah, I couldn't do that. I mean, my car is a, I think it's a V6. I don't know, but. It can. I don't know. I, I don't want. I don't want to get something that's worse on gas. I would like to have a little pickup truck, just like a little beater truck to drive around. But shit, man, even they're expensive. And you know, it's like then you have to, like, yeah, you get a second vehicle, but then you have to have an insurance policy on it and all the other maintenance. It's got to be inspected yearly, you know. And I don't know. You know, did you ever meet Marcus that lives on my street, Wes? No, I don't think so. Well, he's he's got like five or se- five to seven vehicles, and I don't know. I don't know how he affords them. This dude has two pickup trucks, a Cadillac, a uh, Chrysler three hundred. Um, A Thunderbird and something else that convert it's a convertible. And yeah, so what is it? It's six. He's got a lot of cars. Okay. Kind of wish you guys would say anything at all, but that's cool. Chief fifty three. I like Chief fifty three. He was a good neighbor. He's actually awesome.
I'm better pick my uh, shark. I just want to say before you guys walk up the stairs, I realized that it is uh, November the 8th, but. Uh, Sorry that it took so long. Molly wanted to go out too. That's all right. So do we uh, complete our long breaths without incident? Or? Um, what's your watch order? Uh, me first, and save it, then Gallandy. I thought Gallandan wanted everybody to watch him on his watch. Why? Yeah. Why? So I guess we're splitting the watch. Is just Savik and I? I I don't know. I just was trying to remember. I just need four hours covered, four and then hours. I do the rest of the watch. Four hours. <laughs> okay, so then. Be first, then save it, then calendar. No. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't uh, There's only two then, watches. You make the decision, dog. You, you throw it out there. <laughs> I, I rest. I rest four hours, and then who? I don't. Whoever wants to watch, then it's fine. And then I watch the rest of the night. You got that. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Are we rolling? Are you rolling for something, Klein? Or what's going on? Whoa, whoa. Where is, what is this hostility? I'm just trying to find out what the motherfucking watch order is. And roll. As, as a matter of fact, I am going to roll. Roll. You have an ancient... Black dragon land on your hands. Yeah, you better fucking hope it's not a D100. <laughs> I'm stepped on my watch. Oh, uh, that's interesting. I didn't see any kind of stealth check at all for that. Well, you just started rolling out of nowhere. You just, oh my God, you just told me to roll. You just yelled at me to roll. DM? I'm <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh, technically, that's... yeah. Like, run your what? game, bro. Oh my God. <laughs> Wes. Yeah. This is like sitting back and literally watching someone gaslight someone else. <laughs> yeah, Clyde, quit trying to gaslight me. Well, I know. <laughs> hey, Craig, have you uh, have you heard the story about gaslighting? No. Yes, you did. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Well, if there's anything that I know, it's that. I'm good thinking. <laughs> that you have a right there. That would suck. Okay, uh, who, who's on first watch? Everybody else. Okay, everybody else, your first part of the watch for four hours passes without incident. Gallandan, on your watch, you can see from your campsite in the hills, excuse me. Where's this guy's picture? I got a picture of him here. Mm -hmm. You can see an older man, um, well built, um, so, sort of um, die motherfucker, die motherfucker, uh, slinking his way down in between the lower valley. Um, he walks um, somewhat gingerly. It looks like he holds his left hand up in the air higher than his right hand. And he's carrying, uh, this is what he looks like. You see a guy. I don't think that's Tom. That's not Tom Bombadil. You'd know because he'd be singing to you right now. It's 
So a humanoid looks looks like an older guy. Um, kind of slinking his way through the lower part of the valley there. Looks like just that just that guy by himself. Uh, yeah, yeah. He looks like the armor of my my armor. Is he that, forged it. Is that a fact? I know this. Okay, well, he's a little tall for a dwarf, just so you know. Wow, who's being racist now? I'm yeah. not. I'm just saying. That was my call for. Oh, my gosh. Canceled. Dude, you should be canceled after this whole campaign with all your what? Elf racism. What? Listen to me. The D elves, DM racism. The elves are racist, bro. They're assholes. Oh yeah, and God. who decided to make them assholes? You could have had friendly elves. Yeah, I ha I have had friendly elves, and you know what? You know what happened? You know what happened? We, we set like, their we set their <laughs> their town on fire. Yeah, you set their, one of their town set, guards. You set the fucking town on fire. You blamed it on a town guard who got exiled. He was totally blameless. That guy somehow survived to the end of the game, and then got his soul devoured by fucking Black Razor. Oh. And you asked the great old one, uh, what would happen if you, how many souls you could get for uh, sacrificing a pregnant lady? I mean, that's a legitimate question. Yeah, but that's. <laughs> I mean, that really brings into is it? Is it a you know, <laughs> that's just that's what I like. That's a question I like to put on the list of reasons why I could never run for political office. Uh, he hangs up. <laughs> yeah. Well, we all it, is it a sorry. life at conception or not? DM. Oh. <laughs> Danger well, Will Robinson. Thing. Thing. You know, things happen. We're sorry. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. That's okay. I'm okay. It's okay. I don't know why. I don't know what you're apologizing for. I'm just saying I had friendly elves, and you guys went nuts. You know what happened the last time I was around elves? I got thrown into jail for trying to desecrate their sacred grove. And then got, uh, you killed one. I got, yeah, I got shit stomped after that. And came at him, surprised him, and then I got beat down. We could, yeah, yeah. And then you got to get out of here. So you're thanking me. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have thanked you. Okay. Anyway. Wait, wait to <laughs> uh, the, yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, they're just xenophobic. They, you know, they don't think that they're better than you. They know it. So, you well, know. Standard, standard practices. Dude, how would you feel if you were th if you were like, hey, I'm, I'm Corlon Lotharian's chosen Corellian Lotharian Larathian? Oh, God. Uh, Larathian? Uh, 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 I'm, I'm having a hard time with my pronunciation lately. I'm just going to go ahead and say that I am, though. And I am just, I guess we'll just track the old guy who's in the woods by himself. Bring us up back on topic after an hour and 17 minutes. You going to track that guy? Well, yeah, we'll watch him. Okay. Uh, how long do you want to watch him? Uh, yes, so he passes through the old camp. Okay, well, he's below you. Uh, he's below you a ways. Did you guys build a fire, by the way? Hell no. Hell oh, no, it's, he said. It's summertime. Well, technically it's the fall, but, you know. Let me see. What did I roll for the weather?
Okay, so no fire. Um, okay, so um, he moves off from your camp below your position and moves off further to the north. And you can track him as he moves further down the ridge line. Okay. Are you trying to put Hunter's Mark on him or anything? No, I just... No, I burned all this. Well, yeah, I got new spells now. Um, now, what do he look like? I put um, his picture in the thing. Is he just like he's wearing his own clothes or something? Or is he uh, wearing like a, a Burger King hat or something that he can... Okay, yeah, I actually, I have an image of him. Let me grab Yeah, but I, I see I see one image. But does he have anything like, is he holding up a flag or some, anything obvious? Yeah. Or no, he's just like a dude with his, his own stuff walking along. Uh, <clears throat> okay, here's something that you notice about him. Uh, <clears throat> as he walks past, um, he is missing his left arm at the elbow. Okay, well, the dragon bit it off. Let me see if I can find his... Uh... Hold on, he's in here somewhere. I just made too many minis in my life. Well, I think if this guy has a picture, I should uh, go see who he is. If this guy has a picture, he says. I'll go over and say, hello, I am Gallon and the Moon Whisper. Oh, you're going to go, you're going to follow after him? Yes, I'll say, I am Gallon and the Moon Whisper. Okay, give me a second. Where the fuck is his, I made a mini of him, and it would be really helpful if I had that to show you. All right, fuck it, I can't find it. So just let me grab my thing out of my notes here. So you go up to this guy's camp, and are you sneaking in, or are you just walking into his camp? No, I'm just walking in. Just gonna go for a handshake. Just gonna go for a handshake. <laughs> Right. I'm sorry. I just need a second here. So uh, you walk up on on this guy's camp, and uh, what do you you say? Hello, I'm Gallon Dan Moon Whisper. Hello, I am Gallon Dan Moon Whisper. 
Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the what is your name? He turns to regard you uh, somewhat coolly. He's a little surprised to see you there in his camp, and he raises his hand, his right hand, and you can tell he, he raised his other arm, but seeing as how his left arm ends at the elbow, um, you know, he's just kind of raising the upper part of his arm in the air. And he says, ho oh, there. And he says, I don't have anything of value. I will begin to read him with Miranda rights. <laughs> uh, how lucky for him. What is your name, you uh, young chap? Uh, he says his name is uh, Yaris. Yaris, is that with the Y? He nods, yes. Yaris. Well, Yaris, uh, what brings you in the fine woods and where is your arm? And he says, uh, do, I, do you, I have to answer your questions? You have the right to remain silent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose the not. No. You will be on my way then if you do not wish to be disturbed. And he says, wait, wait, wait. He says, uh, you're probably going to think I'm crazy, but if you're out in these parts, you might as well know. He says, there's a there's an ancient black dragon that lives just north of here. And I mean to set out to kill it. Were you after his treasure, or were you after killing the dragon for uh, any uh, for a reason other than that? And he smirks at you and nods at uh, what remains of his left arm. He says the beast bit off my arm back in the day. Oh, back in the day. Oh, back he's in trying the day. to get it back. Well, I don't think you can get it back there. Chubbs. He says I. Yeah, Chubbs. He Chubbs. said I'd, yeah. I'd settle for I'd settle for revenge on the beast. Ah well, I've been itching to go up there myself. I think. Uh, I could make, I feel confident I can make uh, some short work of him with a uh, little help with my companions, of course. But, um, you know how old this beast is? Uh, Yaris, he shrugs. He's, he seems to say, he says, I, I, I can't say for sure. Uh, I heard tell that he's been up in these, these parts for, Longer than the kingdom's been in the south. And, um, but who, who's to say? He says, I, well, uh, I originally came out this way some years ago, back when, uh, Varn was king. And, uh, I was, a, uh, I was a sellsword serving in the, uh, the, the senior Lord Mournhold's household guard. And, um, he led a contingency of us into the mountains here. And we meant to uh, 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 oust the dragon. And uh, the beast got the jump on us. Sadistic bastard as he is. Slaughtered most of us to a man. Maimed me for life. That's a very sad story. He nods. He says, "You should try, uh, try learning to wipe your your ass with your uh, your less dominant hand." Somebody's come in contact with their inner self. <laughs> anyway, Yaris looks at you and he says, uh, "So you think you and your companions can kill the beast?" 
Yeah, I don't see why not. I got a new bow. He looks over your, he asks if he can see your weapon. No, no last time I did that, they took it. Oh, he says, well, I mean, no offense. I can't even use the, the thing. You got a foot, don't you? He laughs as if uh, your statement is uh, absurd. He says, what do I look like to you? He says, I'm an old man. Well, didn't you see the TikTok I sent you? The <laughs> archer, he could shoot with his foot. Uh, he says, no, I've never heard of something such as TikTok. <laughs> okay. Well. He says, well, if you say that bow can kill a dragon, I believe you. He says, you look like uh, you know a thing or two about gathering herbs. He says, I'm trying to find some poisons that'll bring the creature down or weaken him in some way. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, what would I be looking for but, uh, in that case? Uh, hold on. Let me look at my notes. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, Yara says that uh, the first component he's looking for is called Twilight Moon Dust. He tells you it's created from glowing mushroom spores found in deep caves or dungeons. Twilight Moon Dust. What's that? Oh, uh, Twilight Moon Dust. Yeah, Twilight Moon Dust. Caves. Dungeons. Now I got a mushroom. Twilight Moon Dust, that'll do the trick. Well, he says there's a second component that you need once oh, okay. you once you you uh, prepare the moon dust. And what's that one? Um where was it? Moon water? Nope. Midnight moon dust. Um, let's see, Sturge nectar. Uh, um, most commonly used by Yaris tells you it's most commonly used by swamp dwelling creatures such as li lizard folk. Uh, he will caution you that it is foul smelling and sticky, made from rotten fruit of the. Uh, Keen's tree mixed with stagnant swamp water. Okay. He says, "We'll we'll get <clears throat> we'll get the the twilight moon dust and the sturge nectar, 
Maybe we can package it up with some meat or something, try and entice the creature to eat the poison. That should make it weak enough that it, uh, we should be able to finish it off. Okay. And uh, you notice that, now. What's that? I thought I would keep my eye out. Uh, my eye. Right yeah, he says. He says, uh, "I'm gonna make camp here. Uh, I'll be camped out here for a few days, and if I don't hear from you, I'll move on. But I'll leave you signs to follow me." And you notice that he doesn't. Uh, the only weapon he has with him is um, a spear and a short knife. I guess it's closer to like it would be like a short sword, but for a one-armed guy, he's pretty cocky. Running around with a spear. Okay, well, well, if you believe this song, uh, no, John, I hope. I got a gun. You got a gun? Oh, yeah, you do. Maybe I'll just give him the rifle and some bullets. All he's got to do is aim it in the right direction. Yeah, I'll just leave him with the rifle. Figure out how this works and let me know later. Don't shoot your arm off. Okay, he takes the the blunderbuss and the blunderbuss and uh his eyes widen at the sight of it and he nods at you and he says, I'll uh I'll start tinkering with this while I can. All right, sounds good. I'm gonna go to the cathedral with my friends. Bye. <laughs> he says, okay, love you, bye. <laughs> okay, I'm going to roll for a stealth check. Okay. A 28. And I got three arrows. What are the rest of you doing? Did he wake us up? Oh, I guess not. Oh, he just, yeah, he just left you guys. Just, That's what I thought. I'm he like, he fucking left you guys. <laughs> so, well, they're sleeping. Holy shit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, summon familiar and okay that's how i'm starting this off find familiar spell huzzah give me a second i gotta answer a text Are we uh, back to the cathedral? Yeah. Okay. Can you see it? Is it on the map? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Theme themed encounters and stuff, you know, I don't know. Maybe just walk up here and see what happens. So you're worried about it being out of season in a completely made up environment that you made up? Yes. <laughs> you can say it's fucking snowing. There's nothing we can do about it. It's your world. That's wrong, Kyle. It's everybody's world. And by everybody, I mean the five people that play in it. <laughs> Everybody else can eat shit. (laughs) 
Oh, before we go up here and start shenanigans, um, do should I be adding the broken aisles? And I don't mean the broken aisles from WoW. I mean a segmented broken aisles. I gave you a whole backstory for him. Yeah, so does that mean Adam? Yeah, the... Uh, Would the they look good there? Uh, what giant rabbits? I only want to add them if you guys want them. Uh, well, we need a, you know, a reason to go there or do stuff, but... So. I heard there's a, a green dragon hatchery there. Green Dragon Hatchery? Who the fuck would do something like that? All right, Galen Dan, you're at the top of the stairs. Here's what you see. You come out into a courtyard, a lower courtyard. Uh, in front of you is a large uh, water fountain, which is transferring water from the upper level to the lower, uh, despite the, uh, the steady flow of the water. Uh, it appears to only be two or three feet deep at the most. There are statues of long forgotten guardians in the corridor, uh, in, the cor in the courtyard here, um, with braziers that, uh, burn hear a low flame. What's that? I hear if you hop on one of those, um, you could get all the, bad guys to evade and then reset. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, there is a tree uh, about 30 feet tall to your immediate left, uh, bushes to your right, and two staircases that lead up to the upper level. Uh, one on each side of the fountain. I'm creeping up. All right, guys, I'm going to tell them I'm oh, here. Go this way. Fix the uh, pump for the water fountain. Oh, my God. Are you really? What? I'm just asking, are you? I mean, I think that's a pretty sweet idea. Yeah, I just, I just, wanted, to, I just wanted to find out. I'm here to maintenance the water fountain to keep algae and stuff from happening. Um, if you didn't know, Gradius studied under the Book of White Iron. Oh, is that right? Here to fix your cable. The, the cable guy. All right, so you creep up the stairs, and here's what you see. A giant pumpkin. There is a giant pumpkin growing out of the fountain. Yeah, I've seen this episode of Charlie Brown. Stay the fuck away from the pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, uh, as you come near the upper level of the stairs, you see two elven archers here and here. Be a real shame if they caught an arrow, huh? Well, if they had the go the gloves of missile snaring, they could be catching arrows and telling everybody to eat a dick. But that would be absurd. I, I vaguely remember that from Boulder's Gate. Yeah, you got to drop money on those right away. They're so good. They're so worth it. They literally, like, nullify it all of the goblins, like range attacks. Uh, I used them on my Astarian into the end game 
Like he, like I used him the whole time because. I mean, it literally removes ten damage a turn. Yeah. From a range attack. Okay. Um. Ahead of the great pumpkin, uh, there's again two of these faded and worn statues with brazers in front of them, burning away slowly. Uh, up the stairs, you see a solitary figure in a green robe carrying a withered staff, uh, standing with the staff stretched outwardly in front of him. Uh, <clears throat> mutter, it looks to be like he's muttering to himself. Okay, I attack him. You're going to attack him? <laughs> yep. What about your plan to say you work for the cable company? Well, I don't know. Or the water repair fountain or... Oh, you want to do that? I mean, you just attack him. It's fine. Hey, I don't care. I'm just, I just want to make sure I understand. Uh, I didn't think we were serious. I thought it was a joke. Oh, well, I mean, I can never tell because of this legendary dwarf, Harry White Iron. I would like to uh, run from the top of the fountain and then cannonball into the bottom of the fountain. Dude, Haru White Iron is like you versus the guy your girlfriend tells you not to worry about. Either way, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Haru, Haru White Iron is coming to steal your girl, and the only thing he's going to be scared of is bats. You know, when the pandemic started, it all made sense why he was scared of bats then. Well, <clears throat> I'm running a little short on time. So are we attacking him or are we still? Oh, yeah. You, you got to go, I guess. What do you guys want to do? He's, he's uh, just doing something. You're going to attack gonna him? I'm just going to follow Gallon Dan. <laughs> I'm going to auto follow Gallon Dan. Dan. On auto. At, this, yeah, yeah. at this point, we all just have to kind of follow him. He does so much damage. So it's like, whatever he wants to do, all right. <laughs> Well, I'll go first. Bro, let me at least get it. Can I at least pull up its stat block, please? Don't waste your time. No, trash his ass. <laughs> yeah. All right. Go ahead. Just, just look at his HP. I thought you got it. <laughs> Is that your initial roll, Cedric? Nine? Was that uh, you just admitting role. that you don't have your character sheet open? Uh, I don't have initiative roll. 25. Yeah, roll initiative, fellas. Initiative 25. Oh, I actually got a good one this time. Seven for initiative. Seven. Like seventh grade is the most cringe year of school. Yeah, like as in seven, as in 13 is the highest number I've rolled at the table tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Save it when you turn to Craig. Ooh. Don't put that bad juju on him. Four. I hope you have sons. Beautiful sons. And they roll fours their whole lives. Don't you put that shit on me. Okay, well, I feel like he's going to be surprised. Do you have line of sight on him from there? I would think so. It looks yeah, like... and if I don't, I'm going to roll up the stairs and throw the air up in the air and catch it and shoot. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay, you can, you have... Yeah, but you got to yell trick shot as you do it. Kobe! Be surprised. What's that? Uh, he yeah, he, 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 yeah, he would be surprised. 
Yeah, he well, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold three arrows in my bow hand. Okay. Okay, like you're holding and your throw bow. Throw them all to different heights, and then catch them as they come down one at a time and fire. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me. Uh, okay. <laughs> How, co how come that is allowed without disadvantage? Did you see the TikTok I sent you? No. <laughs> uh, well, you okay, need to fine. go back and rewatch it. I will. I will. Go ahead. You're thinking of modern archery. All right. So I got uh, some numbers, and I want to divvy them up across the courtyard, depending on what happens. So what if I hit this guy for... Okay. What guy? I got a twenty-one. Oh, oh! I got a copy and paste. Sorry, sorry. What happens if I hit this guy for his whole HP? He dies. <laughs> okay, here's what I'm playing with. Twenty-one to hit, twenty-five to hit, and twenty-four to hit. Are you putting it all on the druid? Or... I don't think so. I want to. I want to put enough on him and then. Look at somebody else and take, try to take someone else. Jesus Christ, did he really hit for 134 damage? So how are you going to distribute the damage? Okay, first shot, uh, 44 piercing plus the 14 sneak attack. Uh, 57? 58. 58? Okay. Are you still up? Yes. Okay, now let's apply the 40 piercing damage. Oh. Okay, he's dead. Okay. Well, well, uh, well. Fuck. God damn. Guy, oh, bitch. Don't you want to fight the great pumpkin? <laughs> guy Apparently not. 24 to hit this guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, 24 hits. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, that guy was marked. I can't apply mark on this guy, so well, th he's thank, going to take a little bit left. So he's going to take 20, um, 20 points of damage. On this guy. Okay. Right? Right. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. 24. You need to slow down there, Gallon Dan. You could start giving us some more black puddings. You come into a room of, filled with black puddings. I retreat into the hallway. The hallway is also filled with black puddings. <laughs> You're in hell. <laughs> Also, I run really far. All right, so you put 84 damage on the druid, and he dies, and you drop 24 on this archer here, and uh, then you're going to take off. Oh, I'm going to run up the pumpkin. You're going to run up the pumpkin? Yes. Okay. And then I have I have forty five movement, so I'm going to move up the pumpkin. Okay, the pumpkin is probably I don't know how tall is the great pumpkin. Is it higher than six feet too? Um, I don't know. I've never really thought about. Let's see, the Great Pumpkin is an on-team character, according to, what's his name, Linus. Dude, I just want to know how big the Great Pumpkin is. I don't know. I don't know. It's 10 feet tall. Like... Well, can I just run and jump up the pumpkin then? Yeah, if, you're, if you get a running start, I'll let you. Okay wall run or whatever i can jump off the thing okay i'm gonna 
the pumpkin shoot it. Shoot him! No. I guess I, oh, okay, I, I didn't need all that. I was looking for this. Uh, okay, save it. It's surprise round time. Okay. And um, let's see. Is this guy dead? Yet? Oh, he shot the guy. He shot the guy up front there, right? Yes. He took the druid out before he could do anything cool at all. Okay. That's anything cool, bro. Nice. Deep down 24. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and have my familiar fly over and take the help action and distract Mr. Guard here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, can I... Do I have line of sight on this guard here? From where I'm at? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. you would at least be able to see through the eyes of your familiar as well. Uh, okay. Uh, in that case, I'm going to go ahead. This is like an open railing, right? I, okay. I should have described this better. This, yeah. is a, this is like the railing inside the cathedral, and these are just bushes. <laughs> and, of course, what's that? Uh, you know, your description is perfect. This is the railing just like in the cathedral. <laughs> All right. Well, just like <laughs> I don't know. Uh I'm going to go just ahead. Just like in the uh, cathedral zone. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I think and he's trying to get us to restub for that uh season of discovery or whatever is going on. Dude, is it true they released all three ex the like three expansion packs at once. So they didn't release three expansion packs at once, but they actually just announced the next three. So people actually know where the story is going, because as you guys know, like after Wrath of the Lich King, the story has been kind of fucked. I like, that it like just goes all over the place continuity wise. So that's why they're announcing like three to have like a set of, like, this is the direction we're going in instead of just completely changing it every expansion. Because we killed Arthas, and they're like, ah, uh, we don't know what to do now. Is, is, like, Arthas alive again? No. I don't know anything that happened after Legion. They made Sylvanas go crazy. Oh, I always watch the trailers because the the trailers are fucking. Did you excellent. see the new one? Yeah, that looks not, like it. Just I, looks set up cinematically awesome. Thrall's like, stab me, bro. Saw that. Stab me, bro. You won't. You a bitch. Oh, you know what, Grady? It was supposed to be your turn. Oops. Savic went before you. That's okay. That's okay. My fat ass is sprinting up here, and I'm up casting my spiritual weapon right beside this guy, and I'm going to hit him with it. Nice. I heard that dwarves are natural sprinters. And yes, I'm going to make we this are. joke. I'm going to make this joke every single week. Every single week I play a dwarf? Yeah. No. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. That's a miss, buddy. He took the wind right out of his sails. <laughs> My character lays on the ground huffing. 
<laughs> He's having an existential crisis. Get this man a brown paper bag. <laughs> oh, anything else? Nope, that's it. That sucks, buddy. All right, well. Yeah, because yeah. you know I'm not going to have another turn. No, I mean, there's two other guys across the courtyard here. Yeah, have you met Gallandan? Yeah, I mean, and that's a long way to sprint. Speaking of Gallandan, it's your turn. So the order will be Gallandan, Gradius, and then two of the bads, and then Savik, and then the other. Oh, well, no. I'm sorry. The last guy is dead already. Okay, so one bad will go after Savik. So, Gallandan, you're up. Hey, okay. Did you hit the guy up in the corner there? No, I missed him. You got your weapon there, though. So if I kill him, you have to move it. So let's mark uh, one of the guys on the other side. I'm on the great pumpkin. One of the guys on the other side, you said? Mm -hmm. <sighs> 26 and 26. Don't you want to see how much damage you do against the Great Pumpkin? Mm -hmm. uh, there's not really anyone to conjure it anymore. <laughs> mm. 26 and 26 hit. Okay, 59. Okay, well, uh, obviously you're going <laughs> to destroy this elf archer. This is like civil war for you, I guess, huh? Civil war. This is a slaughter. The moon this elves is genocide. The, the moon elves and the sun elves are very closely linked together. Not this one. Not like, um, perhaps not. This is about like, the kill storm. <laughs> this is about pad my stats in mid. I'm yelling at Gallandan that we need to get the flag. Oh, and then they wanted to go back in the arena and play Warcraft PvP the entire game. That's all we do anymore. <laughs> play Warcraft PvP. Just kidding. I'm in turn. Hey, they can't cap the flag if they're all dead. Okay. Gradius, it's your turn, and that's a good point. I am going to run to here and I'm going to put my hands on the top of the railing and like flip over it right in front of this guy. Give me a acrobatics or athletics. <laughs> okay. I'll let you do it with an eight. You flip on up there. Hello? Sorry, I was sending you something. Hardcore parkour. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. I show up to attack him. I'll, let you, I'll let you slip up there, but yeah, maybe it's hard for you to stick the landing. I got this, guys. I don't got it. <laughs> Ugh. I am still going to attack with my spirit weapon, though. 21. 21 to win. All right. You're not going to like this. I haven't liked anything that's happened since you guys came in this cathedral. <laughs> Nobody 22 wants to... damage. <laughs> Nobody wants to fight the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Damn, 22 for real? Yeah, upcasted it. Okay. You add a D8 for each level you up. Yeah, oh, I know, I know. All right, well, um, that dude gets slammed with a spiritual mug of ale, a tankard. He, he shows up at Wibs, and here comes two red deaths. He's going to have a bad hangover in the morning. Anything else for you, Grady? What is this? Shut up and drink it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. All right. Uh, let's see. After you, it is this bad over here. 
uh, without line of sight on anybody. He might be able to see Gallon Dan on top of the pumpkin. He has line of sight Gallon on Dan himself. Wrote, yeah. He just his line to... of sight on himself. Yep, he just himself? needs to turn his bow around. He just, he and just shoot needs himself. to shoot himself. <laughs> yeah, just shoot well, Take the easy way out, bruh. Um, you know what? I think he is going to turn and dip back this hall. Hey, that's not canon. You told me not to make it exact one for one. <laughs> that's literally, you were like, oh, this looks oh, good. You should make a single change. So guess what? <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, I didn't realize we were playing filler episodes. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. Damn. Ugh. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's find out what happens next time on Dragon Ball Z. Oh, is he going to charge up for the next five sessions? No. Nope. I'm just going to come over here, and this guy that you hit is uh, still up, so he's going to try and hit you. He makes two attacks, 11 and 8, which probably both miss. Yeah. And he will end his turn there, and it is your turn, Savik. All right. I'm going to move here. Mr. Owl. Let's see. He's going to dip back there. That's 65 feet. Yeah. Yeah, we can go ahead and fly in and distract that guy try and hit this dude uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and try and shoot him with a crossbow bolt afterwards uh, 26 and 21 to hit cool um, let's see that's 2d10 for 18 and that will kill this guy okay and another six a good measure Anything else for you, Savik? Uh, I'm going to move here and end my turn. Okay. I guess I should reveal. Okay, that's a round down. So, Gallon Dan, you're up, buddy. Okay. Putting Mark over. Okay. R.I.P. Uh, uh, uh. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, we got 25 and a 24. Those hit and 61. Yeah, 61. Okay, will you slaughter this oh, elf and it runs away? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, well, you, yeah, you slaughter him. Shot through the heart by Bon Jovi starts playing. <laughs> Get the... Gallon Dan over here, like... <laughs> Why is there a tunnel over here? This isn't... What is it? This is filler episode land. Didn't you hear that? Mm. 
I made this map. I made this map without any of this stuff. And Kyle was like, you need to make the smallest change. So I was like, okay. Okay. Hey, don't be mad at me. Be mad at the guy that made the other three maps and didn't make the cathedral map yet. I jump down here and I take a look around. Okay. Uh, the path splits to the south and to the north, further down the hall. Let's check the south. Okay, here's what you find. You were surprised to find training dojo. Oh, okay. I step in and I bow. Do you? Yes. I bow. <clears throat> okay, uh, make a... Uh, Make a perception check. You feel as though you are not alone in the room. Uh, well, I, I took my shoes off. Okay, save my perception. 24. Yes, I'm an elf. Okay, you step, you take your shoes off, step into the ring, and bow. Opposite, across the way from you, as you uh, open your eyes, uh, do you bow with your eyes closed and your head facing downwards, or? Yeah. Okay. Um, as you move to back to standing position and open your eyes, you are shocked to see a ghostly visage uh, before you. Hello, Salud, Karate Ghost. Karate Ghost. Yes, Salud, Karate Ghost. Uh, the Karate Ghost uh, forms. Uh, a sort of uh, karate type salute, which is um, you make a fist and you cover that fist with your, your palm flattened and you present that from the top of your sternum and then you shift it down to below your groin and it's a, a, a salute that um, it's like a ready stance like before you do before you go into a sparring match. So he does that in response. And then okay. shifts into fighting position. Down on. Fight. Do you accept? Yeah. Will you, you'll, you'll spar with the ghost? Yeah, but I, I got to use my bow. Uh, are you holding your bow? Oh, yeah. He's going to point to your weapon and wag his finger. Shake his head. He doesn't want to do that? Then he slaps his, he strikes his, like, slaps his forearms and shuffles again into, like, a fighting position. So, what do I interpret that as? Uh, it seems he doesn't want you to use your weapon. Well, I'm going to bow and then I'm going to leave. You're going to bow and leave? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, you bow and turn to go and, uh, <clears throat> The ghostly visage stands there solemnly watching you depart. Okay. I want to pick up this other coin real quick. Oh, no. I can't use my bow to fight a ghost. All right. So you come up here in the corner and you find a storage room. Uh, okay. Okay. There's all kinds of stuff in here. 
Uh, I'll rummage through for a minute. Is there any gold? Uh, yes, actually, there are uh, two sets of golden chalices. I need to look up their value real quick. Okay, let's see if I got them. It's not the gold chalice of Lathander, it's just a... Uh... Here we go. Why is it so hard to find what a chalice is worth? Like a gold goblet, you know? Oh, here we go. I found it. Four oh. golden chalices. There are crates of weapons, foodstuffs. Um, this looks like bricks of cocaine, but it's not. <laughs> oh, damn. Let me know if there was anything else you wanted to check out. No, I want to go back and tell everybody there's a, uh, a martial artist ghost in here that wants to fight somebody unarmed. Maybe a cleric. He said cleric, Chuck. He said cleric, Chuck. We only knew somebody <laughs> that did some radiant damage. Ooh. Who are you gonna call? Austin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anything you guys want to do, or did you want to move well, on? Well, I want to move on unless. You know, Claire wants to go in there and uh, do ghost stuff. Uh, that's not in my right. job description. I'll, I'll hit him with some radiant damage. Wait, but has the ghost been like aggressive in any way? He wants to basically spar like uh, Mortal Kombat or something. All right. Um, I'm not sure where the ghost is. But, Why don't you tell him what you did to get the ghost to appear? Oh, uh, okay. Well, I went through here, and then I bowed and took my shoes off. And then the ghost appears and bows and challenges the fight. I wanted to use my bow. ghost didn't like that, and then I said, I'm out of here. Okay, well, I'll come down to this room and just stand here. You just stand? Yep. You're just standing in the room? Yep, with my giant chalice of beer beside me. Okay, well, uh, how long are you going to stand there? Um, does anything happen? No. I'm going to tell Gallon Dan that he's a pussy and there's no ghosts here. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Now oh, I'll mimic what, uh, yeah, yeah. what Galadan did. His oh steps to make, make the ghost appear. What a fucking troll. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what do you do? What do you do when you go in? I, I'm just going to mimic what Galadan did. You know, take my shoes off and bow and okay. stand there. All right. You take your shoes off and bow and uh, make a perception check. Oh. 
Well, I guess, would he have to make a perception check if the ghost is voluntarily showing itself? <laughs> Probably not. And if only you were in charge of that role. I just like to ask. I just like to get a greater understanding. All right, well, you bow, and as you look up, there's a ghostly visage, visage, I don't know how you say it, visage in front of you. Uh, it appears to be humanoid, uh, <clears throat> though quite dead and ethereal. Um, it is uh, clearly wearing some sort of uh, monk's kimono or gi, martial artist garb. Uh, uh, I'm going to immediately attack him. because You're going to attack the, him? That's what the Raven Queen would want me to do if I saw, the, I saw an undead. Oh. Oh, damn. Right? Am I am I wrong? Ah, no, you're not wrong. Holy fuck. Okay. So you're going to immediately be hostile. Well, yeah, it's an unliving. Like, my whole religion is based on exterminating them. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, okay, well, why don't you go ahead and uh, you can make your attack roll uh, with advantage because he'll be surprised by that, I suppose. Oh, sorry. Um, add eight to that. I missed the 15 and 14. Oh, no, 23 and 14. Sorry. Uh, all right, let me look at his stat block. What's your charisma score? Mine? Yeah. Oh, a good plus two. Okay, just wondering. That's good. Uh, <clears throat> both of those I were... wrote down it's uh, a 1d6 fire damage for the mace. I did that right, right? It, yeah, and it's a plus two. So you get a plus yeah. two your damage. So. Oh, so it would, act, I mean, the 25, or the 23 would actually be a 24 then. Okay. So 24 and 14. Uh, yeah, both of those will hit. Okay, um, I'm assuming I should just roll the the 1d6 fire damage because the mace itself isn't going to hit him, but the fire damage should. Uh, why wouldn't the mace hit him? Because the arrows didn't work. Um, nobody made an attack on him. He oh. Didn't want, he didn't want to fight uh, Galandan with weapons. He wanted to fight uh, fisticuffs. Oh, okay. You want to have like a martial arts brawl. Now there's my mace damage. And there's my spirit uh, weapon damage. Your mace does 2d8 for damage? Oh shit! It's a I I don't know why it's, it was, should be a one it should be a one d eight and then a uh, plus eight and then a one d six. I don't know why I rolled two d eight. My bad. That's all right. No worries. Do you want three or seven? Clearly, you're gonna want the fifteen, right? I mean, preferably, but <laughs> it's your call. Why don't we split it down the middle and just call it five? Okay. Does that sound fair? We do 13. Yeah, that's good. So 13 plus 23 is 36 plus 2 is 38. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Anything else, Gradius? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, roll, roll initiative. One. Oh, everybody. <laughs> Wait, you rolled a one? Holy shit. On okay. my initiative? Yeah. All right, well, I got, I got some Tom news for you. I'm sorry, bro. That's what my character would do. 
No, you're good. I actually, I actually really love that. That you're like, oh, there's a ghost. It's got to die. Again. Sorry, you didn't die well enough the first time. Let me help you with that. Oh. Um. Okay. So the monkey's go or the yeah the ghostly. Monk is going to hold out his hand and a quarterstaff shall appear and he's going to use that to beat some sense into you. He makes two attacks. Smashes with a quarter strike or a, no, a, a quarter staff, sorry, and that should be plus seven, so that would be 12. And here's his unarmed strike. Oh, 13 and this. pro and 14. Son of a bitch. Uh, I should come in and shoot him with the bell. Oh my god, you guys are awful. Oh, that's that good shit. <laughs> I'm gonna attack him with the bell. Well, right. wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. You're within 60 feet of him. Oh, he already used his actions to attack, so he can't use horrifying visage. Okay, fine. You, uh, you may attack with advantage. What do you mean? Who, me? Yeah, if you want to join this fight, yeah, but you got to roll your initiative afterwards. Oh, what do you mean afterwards? Uh, I mean, like, if he's still alive, you got to roll your initiative. Okay, so I can just attack now? Yeah, if you want. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he okay. uses his action to attack. Is this the first round of combat then? Long, long, long. Yes. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, 23, 25, and 25, uh, 104. Okay. It's over 9,000. <laughs> <laughs> what? 9,000? There's no way that <laughs> All right. Well, your arrow sinks into his, uh, Corporeal form, and uh, he looks up at he looks at you, Gallon Dan, with uh, <clears throat> the face of disappointment and hurt, genuine hurt, as he just kind of fades out of the uh, material plane. Well, he's punching people for one d eight plus one d twenty plus sorry one d twenty plus seven damage. That was his attack. Right? Is that just yeah. attack room? Yeah. Well, what's he hitting for? Nothing. He would hit he uh, his quarter staff strike would hit for a D eight plus four, and the unarmed strike would hit for a D six plus four. Oh, D six. Well, that's still uncalled for. Oh my god. <laughs> well, you know, I was like, this is a cool thing, and then somebody goes steps in there and summons the monk, and then they decide that's fucking kill him. Gradius, I'll give you one one count of inspiration for good role playing. Oh yeah! Don't forget that you have that. I'm not keeping track. Good, good job. No, no, I do. I'm sorry. That's what my character would do. No, you don't. You, you don't have to apologize. I have no. I don't really. I don't care what happens in the campaign. I just want to see what what's going to happen. I'm just saying, you have a Raven Queen servant and uh, put an undead in front of him. You're not going to take too kindly to that. Okay, okay so hands from that one. The druid, the four uh, archers, and the ghost. I think that's going to be 700. Do you guys want to call it here? And then we'll pick it up next week with the last boss battle in the cathedral. Or do you want to keep going? 
Um, oh, you know my stance, but you know if they want to go, that's good. Oh, I don't care. Yeah, I don't either. When do you have to go, uh, Gradius? Uh, pretty soon. Okay. Well, what do you guys want to do? What's the uh, start? You want to start? Yeah, just start it and see. And go in the other, whenever you got to go. All right. Okay. Uh, okay, so um, you go up the stairs of the cathedral, and uh, you can hear chanting from within, followed by a stunning silence. And there's one voice that speaks with clarity above all else. Uh, the doors are shut, though. <laughs> Do I need to make a stealth roll, or do I still use the 28 from earlier? For the sake of time, let's uh, let's go with that. Do you want to keep your same initiative rolls, two of 25, 15, and 7, or do you want to re-roll those? Yeah, oh, that's good. No, no I'd Jacob. like to re-roll. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well... If if Wes is re-rolling, then so is everybody else. Okay. Go ahead and re-roll Wes. Roll, roll for initiative. <laughs> to the 26th hit. <laughs> It would, yeah. Gradius. Yeah. Are you are you rerolling your initiative? Yeah, apparently my Google Chrome closed or crashed though. Oh, and now it looks weird. I guess it's just updated. Oh, this is terrible. Well, that is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's like my Google Chrome just closed, and now that I'm back, it looks it must have updated or something. No, oh, it's worries. terrible. Just it when you when you can, you know. Uh, okay. What I mean, you, you could have just kept my original one. That's fine. But you know, my 18 looks a lot better. Okay, don't complain. Okay, the door is shut. You can hear chanting inside, followed by uh, hushed silence, and which one voice speaks above all others. All right, Galandan, you're going to kick the door open, and I'm going to throw the druid's corpse into the hall. If you kick the door open, you're going to have to make a strength check. Can we, uh... It won't move? I don't know. Well, I'm going to try to right-click on the door with my mouse. Is there okay. a cog or is there a lock? Um, there's, uh, you know, there's like a handle on the door. It's like a church door. So it's got, um, you know, it's got one of those where you, you grab the top of it with your thumb and open the latch. I think we should just open it, roll in there, and start firing. That's what I'll do. Oh, you don't want to, you don't want to hear, you don't want to, you don't want to hear it, you don't want to hear what anybody's is having to say or anything? You just, you don't care. <laughs> you don't just... care? You, <laughs> you don't care? The, the, they'll keep talking. I thought you said... <laughs> I thought you said I've listened to enough. I thought that's what you said. I was like, God damn, okay. Like, shit. Good 
Yeah. All right, well, you, you let me know what you guys want to do. Uh, open the door, roll in, and shoot. And then while they're talking, I'm going to lift them up like sheep. Is anybody, are you going to throw the druid's corpse? <laughs> like, what are you doing? No. When he opens the door, when he opens the door, I'm just going to be standing in front of it. Uh, just, you know, giving it that old. <laughs> nice. Uh, you charging up, bro. Are right, you gonna open the door? Yeah, open the door. Walk on the floor. Anybody walk like? How, how far can you see? How far can you see? I can see the whole room, bro. I can see up to ten miles. Dark vision. You can see the whole room. Yeah, dude. Okay, well, in that case, this is what you see. Open the door, walk out on the floor. All right, the interior of the cathedral is a long uh, stone corridor uh, braced by rows of support pillars down the center of the room, um, which is also adorned with a dark red tapestry from the doorway to the altar. Uh, pairs of Voldemar legionaries stand at the ready. Uh, you notice that the first two rows have knelt down in reverence. On the altar in the raised dais, uh, <clears throat> a woman uh, kneels in reverence uh, below. Um, um, how do you want to call it? What, what, how do I want to describe it? Below the... Uh, the figure of um, it's like a ghostly, ghostly image. Uh, yeah, so she kneels in reverent silence, um, communicating with the shade um, in front of her. Um, the Visitor before her is both ethereal and spectral in appearance. Uh, despite all this, you can see wisps of imperial regalia uh, adorning the translucent form of the figure in front of you. And you may be able to deduce that this is the shade of the Emperor Voldemar. Uh, the lady upon the dais is engaged in conversation. Is that the circle one or the square one? Uh, she, the lady is the circle. That's a thought. This shade is the giant square one. Okay. Make this bigger, you can get a better glimpse of what they look like. Uh, are, are you choosing, are you listening in or are you going to attack? I'll listen for a minute if I'm, if I'm not going to foil any, anything. If I'm not seen, I'll listen for a second. Okay. They, uh, they will be conversing in Elvish. So if you don't speak Elvish, good luck. Um, the lady who you come to know as <laughs> who you come to know as Lady Jasana um, kneels before she even dares to look up. You can hear the first words from her lips. Uh, Forgive me, Your Majesty. Uh, I have failed you. We were unable to recover the arcane, um, the Book of Arcane Runes, nor the gemstone. And it appears that we were giving false information about this location. And the emperor glowers down upon her and shakes his head. Lady Jasana, your loyal to the empire is unwavering. Do not trouble yourself with uh, the failures of this mission. Instead, gear yourself towards your next task to the east. 
The invasion of Ashen Port proceeds as planned. The town is under our control and the populace has been subdued, though not without resistance. We still have not located Lord Ash. He and his men remain elusive. I believe they've sought refuge in the hills or the Ashwood, possibly under the protection of our elven brethren. Your task lies uh, <clears throat> to the northeast. Travel to the swamps and reinforce Irvin Morris and his artificer corps there. Ensure that their task remains uninterrupted uh, and hidden from sight. I will, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. She says, I understand your majesty. We will continue our efforts uh, <clears throat> in Ashmark and assist at capturing Lord Ash if we can. The Emperor Shade says, time is of the, es the essence and my patience wears thin. Lord Ash's defiance challenges our authority and threatens the stability of these conquered regions. Ensure that he is brought to swift justice. Uh, Lady Jasana says, we will not fall to your majesty. I'll send the remaining the remainder of my forces to the swamps to reinforce the artificial core and our mission there as well. He said, very well, Lady Jasana. <clears throat> Well, I'm sure that the, on them, she doesn't have any forces left. I don't think she knows that. He says, I'm sure that the Empire's will is carried out. And um, he, uh, she salutes and he nods and then his, the shade of his presence uh, dissipates. Ah, uh, you got to roll out. Sorry, bro. No, you're good. If you guys want to, you got to see the cutscene. Yeah, right. Got to see what the emperor looks like. I mean, if they're asking what I'm doing, uh, during the battle, dude, uh, you're you're fixing the fountain. No, no, I'm just charging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll we'll check in with you in in two episodes. See how it's going. <laughs> This time on Dragon Ball Z. Dude, I did have a funny thought. Like, I wonder what it would be like. To, you could play like an earlier version of a San. You just got to make flight limited and I don't know. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, dude, they got all kinds of stuff on here. San Fighter is a 5e class. <clears throat> That'd be cool for like a spacefaring hey, campaign. It's me, Goku. Oh yeah, uh, now I would totally play it with just sound clips from uh, from Dragon Ball. It looks like it's just reskinned Monk on here. Yeah, pretty much. Makes, that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could dip into Fighter if you wanted to do do like a Trunks build with like a sword. All right, guys. Well, all right, buddy. If you, if you want a preview of the. Uh, of what's going to happen in the next episode. <laughs> All right, catch you guys later. Later, yeah. bro. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you guys want to do? Uh, I'm good to pause here. I think this is a, yeah, I think this is a decent place yeah. to pause. We can come back next week and do the boss fight and uh, then continue from there. I need to write down that you met Yaris. Yaris, the one-armed old old man that is convinced he's going to kill a dragon. Toyota Yaris. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> yeah, we'll pause it here. What'd you guys think of the session? I know it was super casual this evening. Oh, it was fun. <laughs> I thought so too. Yeah, yeah. Laid I had back. A lot of fun There's a little bit of one. everything. I was like, oh man, like a ghost, like a a ghost karate instructor is a cool thing. And then Grady's is like, I'm gonna kill him, which is 
okay. Like it's thematically, it fits with this character perfectly. He actually. But I'm did. just thinking. Yeah, he actually role played. He did the thing. This is like that Leonardo DiCaprio meme from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Pointing at the TV. <clears throat> this one, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, this was a good one. Really laid back, and uh, and listen, if you wouldn't have killed that druid, he was one hundred percent gonna animate this fucking pumpkin into an evil pumpkin. This is why we can't have nice things. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. He was though. I would have liked that. He was though. I would like that. So. Um, Well, I was going to do Headless Horseman, but then I realized that it's been a year that was last year's since Halloween. you fought the Headless. Yeah, yeah. So that means that we've been doing this campaign for at least a year. Yeah. So. Yeah. And we are only in, oh, I need to roll for the weather since you guys rested. We're only on day 34. 34 game days have gone by. Hmm. Oops, I don't want the government weather table. I want just the fifth edition weather table, please. It was like oh, weathertable.gov. <laughs> Can somebody roll a D100, please? Let me know what you get. Anybody? I'll roll it, I guess. 66. Execute order 66. There are clear skies today. You guys are pretty close to level 10, right? Like a little bit over 2,000 experience? Yeah, that sounds about right. I haven't calculated experience uh, for a little bit, but yeah, I think we're getting pretty close. I think it's 64,000, and right now we're probably at like two or 3,000 experience points out. Okay, very nice. Very nice. Then we're we're actually on track. Cool, man. Well, uh, that just means that next week we will for sure get the fuck out of Scarlet Monastery. We'll see about that. Hey, uh, Dave, before you go, I'll show you Dungeon Alchemist if you want to see it. Yeah, let's do a <clears throat> The better question is, should I add the Broken Isles to the northern edge of Tellurium? Can they have their own son? Can they have their own son? <clears throat> yeah. So... <laughs> I kind of like the thought that, <clears throat> like the world of A Song of Ice and Fire, there are strange weather phenomena that go on. <clears throat> All right, let me launch this quick. All right, I'm going to get rolling. <laughs> You're rolling out, bro? <clears throat> yep. What do you think about the island? Oh, hold on. The Broken Islands? Dude, yeah, Stout Marlins, uh, Sword Sage, Skylarking. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <clears throat> I 
I don't know what that means. Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z.